Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the shadowy land of the imagination where all things are possible. Would you believe that a husband and wife could look at the same woman and the wife would see her as an old lady almost in her dotage while the husband sees a beautiful woman in her early 30s? Impossible, you say? Of course, Ray. You know I'm going to bewitch you. You've been trying, haven't you? Well, only half-heartedly. Remember, you're married. I never forget it for a moment. You're the one who seems to want to forget it. You won't even meet my wife. <laughs> well, of course I will. Let's all attend a witch's Sabbath together. You, your wife, and I, your favorite witch. You almost make me believe you're serious, Clarissa. <laughs> Dare to make the date, and then you'll find out. I'd love to see you at a witch's Sabbath. <laughs> mystery drama, The Young Die Good, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Murray Burnett and stars Patricia Elliott and Carol Titel. I'll be back shortly with Act One. never been able to figure out why it's customary to tie strings of empty tin cans to the car of newlyweds. What do the empty cans signify? I can't go along with the cynic who suggested that the cans symbolize the extent of home-cooked meals that the poor groom is going to get for the remainder of his lifetime. I know for a fact that this wasn't true of the young newlyweds we're about to meet, Lisa and Ray Bissonette. Lisa happened to be a good enough cook to be able to win prizes. And on the day our story opens, she'd left a roast in the oven while she went out and explored the small grounds of the Bissonette's little dream house. A high hedge ran alongside the driveway that separated the Bissonette house from their neighbor. And Lisa, with the curiosity that all daughters of Eve have had since the Garden of Eden, poked her head through an opening in the hedge. Hello there. Come on through and get acquainted. Hello. I'm Lisa Bissonette. I'm your new neighbor. I'm Clarice Wenderby. It's good to see young people next door again. I hope you and your husband will be very happy. Thank you. Have you lived here long? Well, I was here before your house was built. Of course, my husband was alive then. And now you're alone? Yes. And happy to see you. You're welcome to drop in any time, child. I'll be glad of the company. Well, that's very neighborly, and I'll return the invitation. Oh, but I have to run now. Take a look at my roast. I expect my husband less than an hour. Hi there, neighbor. Oh, hi. I'm Ray Bissonnet. Well, I'm Clarissa Jaffe. Can I offer you a cocktail before dinner? Oh, sounds delightful, but my uh, wife's expecting me. She heard me drive up and... Oh, uh... say no more. Just remember you have a rain check any time. I'll remember. Thanks. It's nice to have neighbors again. Be seeing you. Welcome, my lord and master, to your home and castle. Hey there, doll. Don't let women's lib hear that greeting. You know I didn't mean it. You didn't? Just the welcome part. Hey, something smells delicious. And yours was the second welcome I got since I came home. Oh? You can say that again. The dish who lives next door was at that hedge opening in the driveway and asked me in for a drink. <laughs> That's why we're married, darling. I love you and your sense of humor. What's so funny? <laughs> she really did ask me. I'm sure she did, darling. She's a lonely old lady. Oh, I'm sorry to spoil your little game, because I saw her earlier this afternoon, and you can't hope to make me jealous of a woman in her 80s. Well, I don't know what woman you saw, Lisa. But the lady who spoke to me wasn't anywhere near 30, let alone 80. <laughs> I know what I saw and who I saw. Well, I'm sure you saw what you told me, honey, but... Well, at least give me the same break you asked for yourself. I know what I saw, too. Oh, but it's crazy. Well... 
There's probably some simple explanation. I'll bet there is. And I'm the one who's going to get it from Mrs. Wenderby the, the first thing tomorrow morning. <laughs> How nice of you to come visiting so soon and so early. Would you like a cup of coffee? Coffee would be nice. Well, let's go into the kitchen. I always find it cozier. Do you take cream and sugar? Just black, thank you. Tell me, are you getting used to the neighborhood? Do you find the shopping center exciting? As a matter of fact, yes. But if you don't... Well, I get out so infrequently. There used to be a farmer's market on Duane Street that had the loveliest, freshest vegetables. Duane Street? It's just one block past the station. Of course, you don't meet your husband at the train, so... My husband's really the reason I came over. Oh, how interesting. You didn't meet him yesterday, did you? Did he say he did? <laughs> Well, he said he met a beautiful 30-year-old woman. Here? In my house? Who's the woman my husband saw last night? My dear child, don't tell me you're jealous. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Wenderby. I'm sorry I bothered you. Please, please, please don't go. I'll try to help you. Why should it be so difficult? There's something here I don't understand, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. It, it might be best... If you move. What? It really might be best. It's ridiculous. Well, do you know what you're saying? Yes. But Ray and I looked for a house for almost six months. We could never find a house like this at the price we paid. I know. Perhaps you'll do well to find out why this house went so cheaply. <laughs> I'm glad you decided to pick up your rain check on that drink so quickly. Uh, no drink, thanks. Oh, come in anyway. It's only neighborly uh, I left the office early today just, just to straighten something out. This shouldn't really take more than a minute. <laughs> Are you afraid of me? Sit down. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, it may sound silly, but last night my wife and I got into a ridiculous argument. Oh, not over me. Yes, you see... Lisa says you're an old lady. Well, how could she, since we've never met? Well, that's what I told her. But she insists she was here before me yesterday and spoke with an old lady who said she lived here. Oh, now I understand. What a silly, silly mistake. The old lady your wife met is my mother, Therese Wenderby. Your mother lives with you? But not all the time. But she's here a good deal. My husband's wonderful about it. Well, Lisa told me she was very definite about saying she lived here alone. Mm -hmm. Well, now you know that isn't so, don't you, Ray? I know, but well, how do I convince Lisa? Well, being a woman, I think Lisa will understand when you tell her my mother's vain. Vain? <laughs> yes, as ridiculous as it sounds for a woman her age, she just hates to admit that she has a daughter my age. Oh, I find that hard to believe. Are, um, either of your parents living, Ray? My dad. He's, uh, 68. Well, you find that the older a person gets, the more childish their behavior can become. Uh, I'm glad you said can, because I don't think my dad <laughs> Well, is, uh... let's, let's hope not. But, uh, can you understand why my mother lied to your wife? N -n no, not completely, but at least I'll be able to calm Lisa down. No, no, no. It's the most ridiculous story I've ever heard. But, darling, I tell you that I... I know what you tell me. You've been telling me for the past half hour. And I tell you it's nonsense. Did you ask to see her mother? It never occurred to me. Why not? Well, I... I you I... didn't take my word seriously enough to question this beautiful dame you say lives next door. That's why not. Oh, now, Lisa, I, I mean, I, I... I can't know why you're making this personal. I believe you. I believe you met and spoke with an 83-year-old woman who said she lived in the house next door. Alone. Alone. 
Now, why won't you believe that this woman is the mother of the young woman who spoke with me? Because Mrs. Winderby said she didn't have a daughter. But I've already explained that. And I don't buy it. For the hundredth time, why not? Because when I spoke to Mrs. Winderby today and told her your story about meeting the young lady, what do you think she said to me? I can't imagine. She told me to move. Move out of this house. Well, that proves it. The old girl is slightly batty. <laughs> I know how to settle this. We're going over there, the two of us, and straighten this out once and for all. <laughs> well, it is possible that they're afraid to answer the door. That's not possible. But it is possible that no one's home. You said you were just talking to her. I think we've been arguing at least 15 minutes. She... she could have gone out during that time. But there are lights upstairs. Well, some people leave lights on when they go out because they're afraid that an unlighted house is an invitation to a burglar. I can't understand why you're so dead set against admitting that for some reason she doesn't want to meet me. And I can't understand why we're standing outside an obviously empty house ringing a doorbell when we could go back to our place. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ray. It's okay. I don't know what's happening to us. Or I guess I should say what's happening to me. I'm behaving like all the wives I've hated all my life. Oh, forget it, love. Ray. Hmm? Why was this house such a goodbye? What? Mrs. Wenderby told me to ask you why we got this house so cheap. Oh, I thought we were going to stay off this subject. I just want a simple answer to a simple question. Is that really all you're asking? Yes. Why won't you answer me? Well, I... I have my reasons. I'm sure you have. And I guess it's because of the attractiveness of that 30-year-old woman you say lives next door. Well, you're jealous. That's what this whole thing is about. You're jealous. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> For Pete's sake, Lisa, the reason I don't want to tell you is... Well, it's because I'm afraid you'll get upset. I'll be more upset if you don't tell me. Okay. <sighs> Superstitious people around here think there's some kind of jinx on this house. Jinx? Uh, it's silly, but there you are. Why? Why do they think there's a jinx? Something about the last two couples who lived here. Both husbands are dead. They died under peculiar... I don't know. Don't worry about it. It's it's all a lot of nonsense. How did they die, Ray? I don't know. Nobody knows. They just disappeared. Disappearing husbands have always been a problem to the wives they leave behind. And houses with a reputation for bringing tragedy to families that dwell in them have always been a problem to those who want to dispose of them. Behind both problems, there's always a reason. And that's what Lisa Bissonette intends to discover when I return shortly with Act Two. Today's civilization is replete with problem solvers of various kinds. We have our priests, ministers, rabbis, and gurus. And we have the psychoanalysts, the newspaper columnists, the palm readers, soothsayers, and astrologists, all doing their best to clear up the riddles of the living. Some strong-minded people prefer to do their own problem-solving. Ray Bissonette was one of these. And he faced his problem by coming home early, leaving his car around the corner, and walking across the lawn of the house next door to his. Hi there, neighbor. You look like a man with a problem. All right, you are. Can I help? You bet. Because you're the problem. Oh, don't tell me it's your wife and my mother again. That's exactly what it is, and I'd be grateful if you just walk across to my house with me right now and let me introduce you to Lisa. Well, of course. You will? Well, you sound surprised. Well, forgive me, but this thing has Lisa so uptight, I... 
I guess some of her nonsense has rubbed off on me. Well, what seems to be bothering her? Is she jealous? It's hard to tell. She finds the situation strange. Oh, what happened? Oh, oh, it's my ankle. Oh. I, I, I turned it in this hole. I told Harry we've got to do something about the moles. They, they tunnel everywhere. Can you walk? I, I, I'll try. Would you let me lean on you? Oh, oh, oh. oh no, 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 this is oh. no good. Let me oh. carry you. Well, I, I'm certainly not going to meet your wife with you carrying no, me. No, I'll, I'll take oh. you back to your place. Uh, Just uh, oh. put your hand around my neck. Oh. You want the uh, couch or the chair? Well, I think the couch, if you don't mind. I, I can put my foot up. Uh, there you are. Oh. Anything I can get you? Oh. <laughs> no. No, thanks. And... Oh, Ray, I, I, I'm truly sorry. Well, accidents happen. Are you angry? Oh, no. No, it was an accident. You should be. Why? Well, isn't it obvious? You and your pretty wife are quarreling, and I'm the cause. Oh, it'll pass. Ray, do you find me fascinating? Uh, it's interesting. <laughs> but not irresistible. Oh, come on, Clarice. What are you trying to do? Find out if I'm attractive to you. You know you are. Good. That makes me happy. Just knowing that I'm still attractive. Hey, you talk like an old lady. <laughs> well, women are funny. I wish I could tell when you're leveling. You will when you get to know me better. Well, that's not going to be until Lisa meets you. I promise you that we'll meet. Uh, when? I don't know, but... Hey, uh, how about you and Harry getting together with us for an evening? Maybe uh, dinner and a show? Well, I'd love it, but... Well, Harry's really pretty much of a stick in the mud. Oh, I'm sure you can talk him into going out with us. Well, I'll try. How about uh, this Saturday? Well, you must prove to your pretty wife that there really is a Clarissa. That's one reason. I'll try to get Harry to go along. Where shall we meet? Well, if you don't hear from me, um, let's make it Theodore. Okay. The food is good. The lights are low, and the music romantic. Well, Clarissa and Harry are almost one hour late. I guess so, but, well, relax. This is a lovely restaurant. We can have another cocktail. No, thank you. I'm uh, sure they'll be here any minute. Why am I sure they won't be? Darling, I spoke with Clarissa this morning. It's just inconceivable they won't show. After all, we're neighbors. There's no reason for them. Mr. Bissonnette. Yes. Telephone for you, sir. Shall I bring it to your table? I'll see you at home, Larry. Hey, now, wait a minute. I've Lisa. waited too long as it is. Both of us know what that phone call means, and I've had it. If you want to talk to me, you can reach me at home. And if you're not at home in an hour, don't bother to come at all. Here's your phone, sir. Oh, thank you. Well? Oh, Ray, darling. I don't know how to tell you this, but... Uh, you, you can't make it. Yes, that's right. Harry came down with this miserable... Well, I, I don't know. I guess it's a 24-hour virus or something, and it just... Well, look, let, let's make it another time. Oh, we... no. That's out of the question now, Clarissa. It's... It's been strange knowing you, but uh, we'd better forget the whole thing. Why, Lisa, child, what brings you here at this time of night? Your sick son-in-law, Harry. I thought maybe he'd like... Harry? Sick. Isn't he? No, not that I know of. At least we're getting somewhere. You admit that you have a daughter and a son-in-law. Well, come in, child. All right. Now, perhaps you'll tell me why your daughter, Clarissa, doesn't want to meet me. Did you, um... Find out why your house was such a bargain. Yes. And you're still not thinking of moving. I want to see your daughter. There's no way you can. Unless you're willing to take my advice. Are you trying to fight me? I am trying to help you. Believe me, my child, I'm trying to help you. And I should know better. What's that thunder? I'm afraid we're in for a storm. You'd best be getting back to your house. But you still haven't told I've me what I... I've done more than I should. Now take my advice 
and take your handsome young husband and move out of that house. My dear Mrs. Bissonnette, I understand a little bit of what you're trying to tell me. But I still don't understand how you found me. Professor Cooper, I told you. I was looking at these books on witchcraft in the library, and I came across your name several times. And everyone seems to agree that you're the foremost authority on witches. So I checked with the publishers, and they gave me your address. And uh, what is it you want me to do? Tell my husband that at least there is the possibility that... Well, that something very strange is going on at the house next door. I couldn't possibly do that, Mrs. Bissonette. Not until I've done some investigating on my own. Oh, would you, Professor? I'll pay, I'll pay whatever you... It's not a question of money. It's time, of which I have very little. But if what you say is true, this might be very productive for my research for a book I'm doing on witchcraft now. I'll check it out. This is my husband, uh, Professor Linus Cooper. Pleased to meet you. Professor, please tell him what's happening next door. I'm not exactly sure what's happening, but I have gathered enough evidence to make me suspicious and worried. What do you call evidence, Professor? I called at the house yesterday... And I saw the 80-year-old lady. Oh, that doesn't prove anything. And no one else. However, I am going to make one further test. Uh, Mrs. Bissonette, uh, tell me, do you remember seeing any clocks in the house when you visited? I really can't say. I was only in the kitchen and walked through the living room. What's all this about clocks? Just this. I intend to get back into that house somehow in the next few days and explore it thoroughly. And if I find that there are no clocks in the house... What? I should then advise you to move, Mr. Bissonette, and move fast. <laughs> I'm very busy, really. I... I know. I apologize for calling you at your office, but I just have to explain. No, I've told you that it's... Please, far... please meet me for lunch today. At Whitley's. Anytime at your convenience. Now, one condition. That you promise to meet Lisa and talk with her. I can't go into that again. Not on the phone. What time? One thirty. It's less crowded, then. just hope I'm not making another mistake. Well, I'm the one who made the mistake, thinking I could play this crazy game. I don't understand. But there is no, Harry. That's why I couldn't meet you and Lisa last night. You mean you're not married? Divorced. You see, there was a no, Harry. Well, why did you... Lie to yes. you? Well, because I... I like you. Well, that explains everything. You like a guy, so you lie to him. Well, you do if you're a divorcee and you want to see him again without... Well, without problems. You're still not making sense. Maybe this lunch wasn't such a good idea after all. Because when I tell you about my mother, it's going to sound like something out of a, a confession magazine. Try me. Well, my mother... Uh, why is it so hard for me to say this? My mother isn't well. Do you mean there's something wrong with her physically? No, no, no. She's old and she gets... Well, you know how some old people get. So now... A little more than that. As a matter of fact, the doctor has told me to institutionalize her, but I just can't. I, I, I oh. won't. Okay. I understand your problem, and even why you don't want to solve it by sending your mother away, but can't you understand mine? Of course, Ray. And I promise to do something about it. All you have to do is meet Lisa and explain it to her. And you also ought to tell your mother to quit telling people horror stories and scaring the wits out of them. I'm home, Clarice. I'm home. And I'm alone. And I must talk to you. I know. 
Then you must know what I want to talk to you about. Of course. Please, be kind. How can I be anything else? Aren't we one and the same, just an older and a younger version of the same woman? That's why I know how angry you are, and it's all so, so, so useless somehow. Useless? Then why don't you appear, Clarice, before Ray? Let him see the old woman. For the same reason you don't meet Lisa and show her the young woman. Right, Clarice. You remember our bargain with him, our master. I only have so much of the energy, and it must be reserved for the young men whom we need to stay young. And I talk to the young women. But, Clarissa, this one I like. And you frightened her, Clarice. You scared her so much she went and talked to our old friend. Who do you mean? Professor Linus Cooper. And do you know what he's been talking about, Clarice? No, 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 leave me alone. He has been asking about clocks. He wants to know if there are any clocks in our house. Clocks to tell the passage of time. You know what clocks are, you old fool. Please, please. And he is going to come here and he's going to look around unless... Unless I stop him. It's very strange. I'd have sworn the house was right around the corner. Let's see that straight sign. Yes, Green Tree Lane. That was the name of the street. I'll just drive over the hill and turn the corner and... Hey, look out, you fool! Watch it! Was that the sound of a car crash? I don't think Professor Cooper will come visiting. I'm too old. Too old, Clarissa. And too tired. I know all about it, Clarice. I know how old you are. And silly. And soft. You told Lisa Bissonnet to move, although you knew very well that her nice young husband would move with her, didn't you, Clarice? I've told you, Clarissa. I'm very old and very, very tired. Just remember, you'll be a lot older and a lot more tired if Ray Bissonnet moves away. You, Clarice might even be dead. From our first arithmetic class, we're taught that one and one make two, two and two make four, and so on. Until today, we're living in the computer society where giant adding machines solve all our problems for us. However, our minds would boggle and the computer would break down in a world where one and one made only one. I'll explain that strange arithmetic when I return shortly with Act Three. Jealousy is one characteristic that is just as prevalent among males as females. Jealous feelings often conceal themselves behind other facades. And Ray Bissonnette is convinced that his wife, Lisa, is overreacting to their somewhat eccentric neighbors because she's jealous of the lady next door. Lisa's willing to admit there may be some truth in that, but she's also convinced there's a lot more to it than jealousy, even though she can't put a name to it. 
There's something so very wrong. I know it. I feel it in my bones. It just doesn't justify our giving up this house and paying a lot more for something nowhere near as nice. And what about Professor Cooper? You're going to try and blame an automobile accident on Clarissa? Clarissa's just a name. I still haven't met her. And you know why not. Would you please, please listen to Clarice? Why should I listen to an old lady who would be in an institution except for the kindness of her daughter? You believe that? Why not? A lot of old people get funny ideas. Mm, particularly when they live right next door to a house from which two young men have disappeared in the last year and a half. Why, honey, you're really scared. Yes. Yes, you big lug, I am. Okay. Short of packing up and moving us out of here, what can I do to unscare you? Listen to Clarice. When you meet her. And when will that be? As soon as I can arrange it. I see your little lady friend from next door is coming to visit, Clarice. And I must say, I'm glad to get a chance to rest. It's quite tiring for me. I know, Clarissa. I know. Now remember, we need Ray Bissonette. I know that. Too. I'm even more tired than you, Clarissa. Much more. Oh, I'm so glad you're home, Mrs. Wenderby. I have a lot that well, I want why to... don't you just come in and have some tea? I was just making myself a cup. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, you don't mind the kitchen? Oh, not at all. My dear, what is it you want from me? I think you should come with me to my house and tell Ray what you told me. Do you think your husband will move out because I tell him he should? You're very wise. And forgive me, but, but very strange, too. Just very old. You don't think about growing old, do you? Well, uh, well of I... course not. You're too young and too alive. You're not worried about the lines and the wrinkles. You wouldn't look for some way, for any way, to stay young forever. Now, come on, baby. This is the 20th century, the atomic age, the computer-controlled society. Don't give me this stuff about witches. How else can you explain what's been going on? I wish... You'd tell me just what you think has been going on. Ray, why is it that I only see Mrs. Wenderby and you only see Clarissa? I don't know. It's because you're a man and I'm a woman. Why should that make a difference? If they both were the same woman, it would make all the difference in the world, wouldn't it? Do you know what you're saying? Yes. Well, where in the world did you ever get a nutty idea like that? From these books. Then I suggest you stop reading them. Stick with the comics. They make more sense. You see, the succubi are really frighteningly ugly, but to young men they appear beautiful and desirable. I can't believe you'd take all this witch and succubi stuff seriously. Two men who lived in this house before us disappeared. The only thing about that that bothers me is that it bothers you. If you're really concerned about me... There is something you can do. Well, if you mean move out, the answer... I mean put my theory to the test. How are we going to do that? You make one last date with Clarissa. Whoa. Hear me out. Just for lunch or cocktail or coffee. You tell me when and where. I'll happen along and you'll introduce me. After I meet her, I'll give you my word. I'll never mention witches or moving again. <laughs> But I I don't think I'm late. Well, you're right on the dot. Honestly, Ray, I was so excited when you called. I, I just couldn't wait to, to see you. My wife asked me to call you. Well, I find that fascinating. She's really bugged about never having met you, and she's getting all kinds of crazy ideas about you and your mother, and I'm, I'm really worried. Well, of course you are. I will have you and your wife at my house for cocktails tomorrow around 5.30. Great. But, um... Only on the condition that you come alone on the following day for tea. I hate tea. Oh, but you haven't tasted my brew. But I... And uh, you also promise to look deeply into my eyes when you drink. You're putting me on. I was never more serious in my life. And uh, 
Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, but I wanted to tell you about this... Talking to yourself, darling? Oh, Lisa, no, no, no. I was just trying to tell Clarissa about your coming today. Where is she? She just this minute went to the ladies' room. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on, Lisa. She asked us over for cocktails tomorrow. She did? I've never seen you so excited. When we ring the bell and Clarissa, the whole Clarice, opens the door and asks us in, it's going to be like the end of a bad dream for me. For me, too, but only because of you. I've never seen you so uptight before. Oh, after I meet her, I'll make it up to you. Just go back to being your old self. I promise. Oh. What's the matter? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I suddenly feel dizzy, as if I'm I'm going to faint. Maybe we shouldn't go any further. We, we can call and make it for some other... No way. I, I'm not going to break this appointment. Let's go. Oh, Barry. What? what? Help me. I'm falling. Oh. You promised not to hurt her. The doctor's car drove into the highway a few minutes ago. We should be hearing from him any minute. There. Answer it. Answer it. I don't want him to think we've been sitting right on the phone. Now. Hello? Clarissa? Uh, yes, Ray. Uh, where are you? I'm home. The most incredible thing happened. We were on our way to your house. When Lisa suddenly felt faint. As a matter of fact, fainted dead away. Hit her head on a stone. Oh, I, I hope it wasn't serious. Well, the doctor says she'll be okay in a day or so, but... Well, meanwhile, we, we, we have to postpone our date. Oh, what a shame. I was so looking forward to meeting Lisa. I have as much as she was. Remember? You're having tea with me. Well, that'll depend on how Lisa feels. I'm so glad Lisa's feeling better. And I'm equally glad you came over for tea. Well, would you be very upset if I drank something else? <laughs> I I'm just not much of a tea lover. Well, you haven't tasted the tea I brew. I promise you, an unforgettable experience. Oh. Well, if... You put it that way. Mm -hmm. I do indeed. Oh, here. Needs just a little sugar. But no cream. Looks awfully strong. Taste it. Doesn't smell like any tea I ever drank. Well, I told you, it's not like any tea you ever drank. <clears throat> Come on now, Ray. Take a swallow. And look at me. I see you. I mean... In my eyes. Look deeply. And drink deeply. Oh, Clarissa. You're... Mm. You're... Yes, Ray. What am I? Oh. You're truly beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Oh, thank you, Ray. Your eyes have a... A radiance and a... And a shine that I've never seen before. And, and your lips. Yes. Yes, my lips. Uh, uh, would you like to kiss my lips? Oh, yes. Yes, I would. Oh, this is what I wanted since we first met, Ray. To hold you in my arms. And hold you forever and ever. And hold your youth and your vitality. And feel it make me young again. And do you still find me beautiful, Ray? You, you've changed. But I can still see your beauty. Drink some more tea, Ray. And hold me. Hold me tight. And close, that's it. Squeeze me, Ray, and I'll squeeze you. Squeeze the life out of you and into me. And... You're, you're not Clarissa. Of course I am. I'm your Clarissa. And Lisa's Clarice. 
and your true love. Oh, oh yeah. She's old. You were the old lady Lisa saw. Hold me. You... Hold me, Ray. Hold me tight. Oh. The tighter you hold me, the more I'll seem like Larissa. Hold me, Ray. Hold me. And love me for all eternity. Because we're bound together. newly married and about to be married listening, I know of a charming little house for sale. It's a great bargain. The only qualification that's absolutely necessary is that the husband be a young and virile man. However, if you purchase it, you don't have to worry because all of you are strong-minded enough to know that there really aren't any such things as witches. I'll be back shortly. Speaking of witches, as we were, it's of course true that people have always had an ambiguous attitude towards them. In some literature, they're portrayed as fascinating, lovely women with quicksilver qualities who bewitch the males with their charms. In other stories, they appear ugly old bags, spreading evil and polluting everything they touch. Which is the true picture? Could it be, perhaps, that both are true? Think about it. Our cast included Patricia Elliott, Carol Titel, Ira Lewis, and Dan Ocko. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. It was more than a promise. Eddie. It was an oath. Look, Eddie. No, you look, Tom. You look back. An amount of dirt in that prison camp. And Korea. You look back and see three guys, we three guys, were kneeling next to that mound of dirt because it's Hennessy's grave. Look back and hear us. Hear us swear never to rest, never to stop, never to know a moment's peace until we kill Robert Joseph Myers. Eddie, how could we just kill him? How simple. Blow his brains out. You, you live in another world whether you realize it or not. Now, you just don't go around killing people. But there are people who have to be killed, Tom. You're not in combat. The war's over. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>